Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how's it going? It's Monday, April 24th And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe Follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon so what is happening on this wonderful and awesome Monday? We've got current news from around the world, the Sunday message word study, and of course, 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan from San Francisco. All right, everyone, how are you doing today? Yes, and how was your weekend? I'm sure you guys were able to enjoy, relax, do all the things you need, and of course, especially on Sunday, receive grace and fire from the Sunday message. And it's Monday again, and we can restart another amazing week together with the Lord. This week's Sunday message is Do Not Stumble on Account of Me. And uh, the second title was The Messiah Jesus Was the Target of Slander Regarding Falling and regarding the falling and rising of the time period. Very interesting. The second one's a little, little bit interesting title, but uh, I really like the last two weeks' messages because it's hopeful, it's strong, it's convicting, and it makes you think more deeply about your faith more than, hey, guys, let's be strong because it's really difficult right now. It's more of, this is what's going on. We got to be strong. And I, I really liked the, the last two weeks' messages. It, it just feels like there's a big turn in the word for all of us to think a little bit more differently too. Of course, we're in, uh, we're still in the middle of the 70 day repentance condition. Hope everyone's doing well with that too. Those of you guys have started what uh, some of you guys have started like uh, praying three times a day, five times a day. Some of us are on seven times a day and hope you guys are enjoying that too. All right. Uh, oh, how was Provicom, guys? A lot of comments on the second comedy by Chris Jansen over there in America. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. And, uh, you know, I hope that, uh, you know, it inspires more people to even try out this comedy. Like, you know, he, he called out Wan Chan. He also called my name out. So it's starting to make me think about maybe I should do a comedy bit too. But, I'm j yeah, I'm just not as sure as uh, how uh, if, I can, if I can match that dry humor that dry, sarcastic humor that uh, Chris has. And yes, I am glad you're not getting an AI bot. I am very, very glad. Your voice is perfect for your humor. It's perfect. Either way. So, you know, uh, just make sure when you listen to that Pravicom, give him a thumbs up. Give him a thumbs up. Give him a comment. He did such an amazing job. And like I said, I hope more and more people will try some stand-up comedy. You know, you, you remember his first one was only like three minutes. It's only three minutes, so, you know, you could do something really, really small and just get it out there, all right? So, oh, cool thing happened over the weekend because I'm preparing a new podcast. Uh, it's called The Man Cave, and I did my first recording. It's not going to come out this week. It's going to come out ne the week after, and it's basically four guys talking about their experiences as guys in this history and uh, what has worked, what hasn't worked, the things that turned them on or off or whatever it was, like, oh, this worked for me, this didn't work for me, oh, I missed this, and I'm, you know, and it it's quite revealing, quite funny to and, you know, I guys, I got to let you know that when you start listening to it, I'm going to warn you guys next week again. It's, a, it's four guys bantering, right? And then talking honestly about their experiences. And I have two purposes for it. Uh, the first one, uh, because there's not a lot of guys in, 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 uh, in this history right now, uh, we can actually say there's a drought of men, right? There are a drought of men. And no matter what, no matter what anyone is saying... We know it's not successful. Like no one, no church out there is going to say, oh, we're successful. We have, you know, we have one-to-one -one men and women ratio or something close to one-to-one, -one, right? And it's so dire right now that, um, you know, we don't have enough guys like later in the future for girls to get married to, which is, you know, this is, this is how crazy important this is, right? So uh, these conversations will help us in two different ways. Number one is for the guys. It's a platform to talk about what's in their hearts, the things that we can relate to and say, oh, that's funny. Yeah, I went through that same thing too. And it allows guys to kind of get connected, right? The second thing is actually for the girls. And uh, for the girls to understand what guys are like, uh, especially when it's going to help you guys out when it comes to evangelism and such, because you need to know the, the heart of guys and where our minds go, right? So I will start posting these from next week. I'm just going to make sure I got like two or three of these recordings up first, and then I'm going to start posting them. But I think that's going to be super fun also, all right? So uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. That's the man cave. And honestly... Um, I want to start with the girls too, but obviously I can't be in it because, you know, I want to figure out what, what, you know, I want maybe three or four girls to get together and do like a recording because I think that would be kind of cool to hear like a girl's perspective or 
a girl's reaction to the guy's podcast. Like, that would be kind of cool for me to hear about, too. Like, oh, yeah. Like, what, what are girls thinking when they hear the guys talk like this? Or, or when we're talking about certain things that we don't like, and they're like, oh, I do that all the time. Or maybe I don't do that enough. I should do that more kind of thing, right? So that is something that I'm very, very looking forward to do. You know, just uh, like even for me, uh, this first group that I recorded with, they're all in their 20s, right? And they're all, yeah, they're all young 20s and all, everyone's from different countries. So it kind of gives you a kind of a variety, like some one, one's from Asia, one's America, and one is in Australia. So it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, just to, just to get different perspectives of these guys too. So uh, I enjoyed it a lot, okay? Um, oh, I also met this, uh, I also met a member the other day too. Great questions. It's, you know, and uh, I, there's, well, there's a lot of different things that I was thinking about, but they're uh, a great conversation, uh, a member over the weekend. And it's interesting because, you know, I'm leaving Malaysia and people just want to meet me before I leave. Not that I'm special. It's just, you know, it's like, oh, you're leaving. Oh, let's, let's meet before you leave, you know. And uh, there's this one, 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 person, uh, one person I'm very close to. And um, they're asking me uh, the question about the situation in Korea and, uh, and uh, KJS and stuff like that. And... One thing that I was that, that was really interesting to me was I basically just repeat the stuff that I talk about on my podcast, and I, honestly, super thankful because this content on this channel I just say the exact same thing, and they're like, "Oh, that makes sense." Oh, okay, okay, I didn't know about this. Oh, I didn't know about this either. And what is said on this channel about the situation and the the, the mental exercises and such, uh, it helps people understand a lot more clearly, right? And it's interesting. Because for me, once when you know when I'm talking to this person who's asking these questions that I talk about all the time on this podcast, it's interesting because once again it brings up uh, the importance of transparency, and I think this is something that people don't realize how big it really is. So if leaders or churches or people are not you know if they're not transparent about the situation, what I what I realize by listening to this one person asking the questions is people have to make decisions based on limited information. And because the information is so limited, sometimes they have no choice but to think a certain way, right? Or all their information comes from people on the outside or people are trying to get them out. They don't know everything, right? So their thoughts and decisions are made based only on what they know and they're missing key points of information. So, you know, like... That's the big question is, do you want people to make their own decisions based on the information that they have from, from their searching on the media and their searching on what's out there or from other people that tell them that might not be, uh, it might be much more negative or do you want to pick, make, uh, or do you want people to make informed decisions from all the verified information? Like that's a big thing. It really is. And I'm telling you guys out there, whatever country you're in, uh, in the end, yes, you know what? There's a risk. There's always a risk for both sides. There's a risk for being transparent because sometimes people can't handle it. True. So there's going to be a risk there. But in the same way, there is also, I would personally, I would say there's an even bigger risk of not saying enough because then these people are going to start hearing things on their own and they're going to make their own decisions with info that may not even be verified or they might not even have the the right information so you're going to I think you're going to affect way more people by not being transparent instead of uh, affecting people for being transparent no matter what we do there's a risk on every side and we can't say you see we were transparent and then these people struggle and the answer is of course they did the people who struggle are going to struggle no matter what that's just reality right and what's going to happen is if you, one thing I find very, very strange in my head is when leaders think that if we don't say anything, they'll never know and they'll never struggle. And the answer is, come on, it's out, it's on Netflix, it's in the news. Anyone can go and like go to go into a website and Google Translate, whatever. It's so easy to get information. And on top of it, people are going to talk about it. There is no such thing as, oh, well, as long as we don't say anything, we don't have to deal with it. And the answer is, no, you're going to deal with it. And sometimes you're going to deal with it after they leave because they found out on all the information on their own and you just thought to yourself, if we don't say anything, nothing's going to happen, right? So even for me, I was just like, eh, that's not a, you know, I was like, I don't, I don't think that's a very smart way to do it. I think life has changed, right? The way that we do things or the way that we see things and the amount of information that we get out, uh, it does change. And, you know, like when, you know, when people say, hey, aren't you supposed to be objective? And the answer is, well, what, is, what do you mean by objective? 
And I'm not saying that I'm trying to redefine what objective is. I got to be like, for instance, objective doesn't mean being in the middle. That's not objective, right? All of a sudden, people are thinking like, if you're objective, then you you have to believe both, or you have to look at both sides carefully. And I, honestly, I'm like, wait a second. Let's take a look at this objectively, right? I want you to take look at, be objective about you telling me to be objective. And this is not the same person, it's a different person, right? And someone is telling me, he's like, oh, you got to be more objective. And the answer is, wait, what do you mean by objective? Like, here's the thing. I've told this before is, I am fine. I, I was doing fine. I'm in this history. I chose to be here. I believe in it. And I chose it. But people decided to accuse. So the burden of proof is on their side. So now that the burden of proof of, is on their side, I don't need to rethink what I believe. I've already made my choice. That's not me. No, you're not objective. No, the answer is no. I've already been in here for 25 years. I know what I believe. I've seen the things and I, and I, and I believe where I'm at is, you know, that's the place that I've chosen ever since 25 years ago. But they're like, well, then how come you're probably going to look at the evidence we give you and say that it's false because you just believe that sign? The answer is no, no, no. I got to be objective with your evidence. And what does that mean is I'll look at your evidence. Is it proof enough? I got to be objective with it. I can't be on a personal level. It's just, oh, you're good friends with me, so now I have to believe everything you say. No, I don't. That's not objective. Objective is, I see something where someone says to me, oh, man, just wait till the audio comes out on Netflix, and then you'll see. And then I'll, I'm not going to be like, oh, my gosh, okay, I'm going to believe it. Oh, I can't wait, you know. No. Objective is, all right, well, you're trying to, pr you have to prove to me that there's something wrong with my, ch or my side is wrong. You have to prove to me. So wait till it comes out. So I waited. March 3rd, it comes out. Listen to it. Huh, that's interesting. Has it been checked by forensics, audio forensics? They're like, well, not yet kind of thing, right? So I'm like, okay, well, let me just wait until forensics because that's objective. Unobjective is when I become emotional and say, oh my gosh, I saw Netflix and that audio was terrible. Oh, uh, no, don't even, don't even check forensics. Don't even check the audio. Oh, this must be true. Uh, that's, that is not being objective. Objective doesn't mean I come to the middle. No, I was happily on my side and someone from the outside is coming to try to tell me that I'm wrong or there's something wrong with my choice, which is their job to prove to me. And if their evidence isn't strong enough and I have to look at the evidence objectively, like I tell you guys all the time, if they give you evidence, think about it as, well, if I took this to court, would it be enough? Can I go to a judge and say, hey, judge, um, there's a hundred people that are accusing Sunsunim, so come on. Like, they can't all be lying. And is the judge going to say, you know what? You're right. He's guilty. Kung, kung. No, because the judge will look at you ridiculously and say, well, got to prove it. Is it possible that they're all lying? And the answer is yes, it's possible. And that's why each and every one of those hundred people have to prove it. That's just the way it is, right? It's not just there's a thousand people and they can't all be lying. When I look at that, objectively, I'm like, no, well, they got to all prove it though. I'm not going to just sit there on this, this reasoning and irrational logic that, hey, well, one of them must be telling the truth. No, it's, that's, that is not objective. That is totally not objective. So when, pe when I'm telling people that, it's, uh, that I'm trying to be objective, I'm being objective with the evidence they are bringing to me to prove it. I got to be. Would it, would, it, would, it hold, would it stand strong in court? Would it be, is it something that's more of a personal thing, an emotional thing? But everything that they've shown me, everything they keep bringing up week by week is so weak. It is so weak. I'm just like, oh, okay, well, you know, uh, and, and it, even if I, I don't believe in it, say it's weak, and they say, you're not being objective. No, I am. For me, is objective doesn't mean I'm in the middle. Objective is I have my side, and I've always had my side. You just got to prove to me, and I'm looking at the evidence you give to me objectively. And like I said last week, guys, you don't have to answer any of their questions. If they come to you and say, well, what makes you believe? No, 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 no. No, 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 no.
You can't ask me questions like, what makes me believe? You just give me the evidence and prove it to me. Don't try to make me doubt because I might not be able to answer my question properly. Just try to prove it. And I'll look at, the, I'll look at the evidence. And if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. I don't have to say anything. I don't. You're trying to prove that I'm wrong. So you have to prove that I'm wrong. Right? So I, that's, that's the big thing for me is there's, there's always going to be these types of conversations that come up and we have to be ready for them. Yeah, it's like, yeah, sure. If you believe that way, that's fine. I agree to, let's just agree to disagree. But at the moment, the evidence is not enough. It's not strong enough. I'm sorry. Yeah, so maybe you can find me something else a little bit later. But please don't dig up old stuff. Because the old stuff is old, which means that if it was really that strong as evidence, they could have used it in the prior trial. They could have used it way before. So if they didn't use it back then and it wasn't enough for that, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah, it's, it's just too speculative, right? It's just all speculation. So for me, I was just like, someone's asking me like, oh, you got to be objective. I'm like, yeah, well, I, I think that, you know, you're looking in the wrong way. I don't have to be objective, meaning I'm all of a sudden in the middle and I have to forget about all the great things that happened in Providence and the reason why I'm here when I received the Holy Spirit, when I listen to the Word. No, I don't have to forget that. I'm already here on this side. You're trying to, you have to prove to me that my side is wrong or there's something wrong happened. That's your burden of proof. I don't have to do anything. I stick to my side. And the only thing I'm objective with is your evidence. That's what I'm being objective about is, would this stand strong in a court of law, right? Because one thing that you got to know is, the way we judge things when it comes to personal stuff, we can we just easily can just side with someone. Oh, yeah, okay, that's cool. Oh, yeah, but I like you. This isn't this, so I believe you. That's It's a completely different. The reason why I talk about putting into a court of law, because there's real consequences. When it's between you and a friend, I believe and I don't believe you, there's no real consequence, Oh, yeah, okay. All right, I believe you. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I feel so bad for you. Da, 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 that kind of thing, right? But when it comes to the court of law and you're in the jury, you can't think that way. You have someone's life in your hands. 25 years in jail or a death penalty, you can't think about it that way. You'd be way more serious of whether you believe something or not, right? And that's why for me is I think personal emotion plays a big role in a lot of these things that people are talking about because... Just when I see all these, um, all the, the evidence, it is, it's really weak for me because I'm looking at it from a court of law. I'm not looking at it from, oh, that's so, oh, that could be true. Oh, you know what? I've known this person for so long. This person wouldn't lie. That's, <laughs> that just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. Oh, but from my really good friend, they, they gave me a really good question. And I think this is a question that uh, a lot of us might think about too, right? Uh, I don't think I've ever heard this one. Uh, what they, what, what she asked me was, what if our love is not at the level of brides? Are we still considered a bride? Because sometimes you can see someone in the former faith who basically has the love of a bride. They're like that deeply in love. It's like what if people of children of God love God like a bride or better than my love? Like am I really still a bride? And I had to think about that for a second. I was like, huh. So the first question I had to myself is, when it comes to love, is there a line that's drawn? Where you can say, this is the line of a bride, the line between a bride and a, and a child, right? And the answer is, no, you couldn't really tell. You couldn't really tell. Like, there's no definite line where you're like, if someone's sitting on the line, they go up and down, you know, then now they're a child, now they're a bride, child, bride, child, bride. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work. And I, when I really thought about it deeply, the Holy Spirit inspired me and said, when do you know you're a husband or a wife? When? And the answer is, when you get married. Like, that's the line. And after you get married, no matter what you do, you are always a bride and you're always a husband. No matter what, you will always be a bride or a husband. That's the line. The line is when you get married. And after you cross that line and you're always a bride, then, yeah, sometimes your love is strong, sometimes it's weak. Then you're either going to be a strong, like a good bride or a bad bride, a good husband or a bad husband. You stay in the level of, of, of a bride, but from that point on, you are either good or bad. You can never drop down to a child. The moment you're married, you're never a child. You've crossed that threshold and you can never go back. And it's just either, are you a good wife or a bad wife? That's all it is, right? If you look all over the world, when you see a husband and wife, the most, the most important part is, did you get married? Did, you, did, you, did both of you cross the line of love where you both realize we're going to live together for the rest of our life? We're going to get married. We're going to be joined together, right? 
And once the two people decide that, then from that point on, 100% for the rest of their lives, well, unless they get divorced, but for the rest of their lives, they're husband and wife. And from that point on, that love is going to be showing, going up and down as a bride. Right, And it's the same thing as a child. A child too, once they've crossed the line, they're no longer a servant and they're a child, right? A child is obviously born, right? That's the, that's the threshold they cross is when they're born. And what happens there is regardless of how good or bad they are, they will never become a bride, right? That's like saying to say that a, a, a child has the same love as a bride means that the child has raised their level so high that now they're sleeping with the mother, no, it never go like that. They'll, once a child, always a child. Child will remain a child. So I think that's something that a lot of people do think about. Like, oh, am I really that good? You know, why is my love not as good as it was before? No matter what, you're a bride. From the moment that rapture, from the moment purpose of creation, 2015, we're brides. The, the wedding banquet's done, right? The only thing remaining is, are you a good bride or a bad bride? That's all it is. You're a bride no matter what, through, from beginning to the end. Of course, unless you leave, right? And from that point on, what do you do next? So I thought that was quite an interesting conversation. I had a couple of conversations because I'm meeting tons of people now. So I hope that uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people can think about also, right? And, uh, oh, guys, make sure that it's already the 24th. So this week, uh, this week's going to be the end of Sunseam's detention, which is April 27th, which means uh, the judge has to make a decision of whether to keep him arrested in jail during the rest of the trial. Uh, or he, they have to release him on the 27th. And that's something we really need to pray for this week. Pray for the judge's decision on whether Sunstein will be arrested during the entire trial when he should be getting out this week, right? And uh, let's pray that he's set free. At least can go, you know, go to Wormingdong, rest, be in his own bed. And when the trial comes, he can go, go and do that too. And let's just pray that, you know, the judge's decision too is based on a lot of weird stuff. Like for instance, what the prosecution said was, uh, their reasoning for keeping Sunseam in jail during the entire trial, even after the 27th, is because of his flight risk, because of his past history, but we already know that's untrue. So those of you guys um, don't know, it's not true. There wasn't a flight risk. If, it was a, you know, if he's not supposed to be out, he wouldn't be able, to, be able to get out of the country, right? And you know, he was freely coming back and forth. Why? Because all the accusations during that time were dealt with already, so that's why it wasn't illegal what he was doing. So that is, not, that is false. Second thing is uh, the prosecution uh, cited his alleged crimes during the time of his recidiv uh, recid recidivation, rec recidivism. Yeah, during the time he's supposed, you know, those those first three years, he committed crimes again. But that's the trial that's going on right now. So they're saying that he's already guilty before this trial's even finished. So that doesn't even make any sense either, right? So let's just really, really pray for the judge. And, you know, let's get, let's get Sunstein back home, get him some good meals, get him some good, um, good rest in his own bed. Let's just do, you know, let's just get him, let's get him home, guys. So I, let's, let's really pray for this for the next couple of days so that they can make the decision. The judge will just, you know, just, he'll, he'll have no choice but to do it the way that, uh, so that Sunstein can go home, right, during, for the rest of this trial, Okay. Uh, this Saturday also, you know, we have a, a, a new music video coming out. So I hope you guys will enjoy that one. And remember, The Man Cave won't come out until the week after. Okay. Uh, so poll from last week, the best movie of 2023 so far. I put up like these big blockbusters and stuff. And Top Gun uh, and Avatar 2 tied at 30% each. And John Wick sadly stayed at 9%. So I'm a little bit sad about that. But yeah. Uh, and then a lot of people uh, wrote on other movies that they thought was great. Uh, great movie for 2023. And some movies that people are looking forward to also. And me too. I am looking for forward to some movies too. Uh, the new poll coming out right now is how much do you trust uh, media today? Like, how much do you trust the mainstream media today, right? And that's going to be a kind of cool one to see what you guys think about, you know, when you read the, when you read, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when you read the mainstream media or when you hear something from the media, what are you guys actually thinking about it? How much do you trust it? And we're, we'll, we'll make sure that we get that one, that poll out uh, early as possible, okay? So it's channel comments from last week. A lot of great channel comments. We've got 2 O says, uh, this is for the prayer podcast. Thank you so much for the great prayers of God's history. They are really wonderful and really help me to pray better, deeper and closer to God's will and Shimjung. And I can feel and receive the power and energy from all those central figures and Jesus who truly loves God and completes God's history. Uh, there's Marche or March. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, great comment. Uh, 
proves that you're doing so well that they don't even they don't have other sensible ways but to make up entertainment news on you. We don't have to wait till tomorrow for a comedy. Rice Bunny also said, Married wasn't expecting a Pravicom in this episode. Yeah, that's what on Friday when I said uh, in the internet it's saying people are saying that I married Kyla. Yeah. Marsha Lucy, um, the cycle on strong people, easier times, weak people is really inspiring. Uh Jane Garcia, thank you for the podcast. Fills my brain with love from beginning to end. Karen Smith, thank you for your answers for Q&A Thursday and for another great podcast. Great realizations from your mini house flood. Uh, The Seer, thank you for your sermon. I feel it so much. Every word of your sermon. I need God to accompany me more than ever. I need to rely on God more than ever. It's hard to handle all things alone, especially when you're in pain and suffering. I wish so much God is a person or just appear as a person. Help me solve all the problems and worries. And after overcoming spiritual hardship, then is the physical hardship, I will recover. Just have patience. Trust him. There is no other way anyway, right? So that's from the seer. Uh, Cloud. Cloud, is that a play on my name? Because I'm Sky and and this person's Cloud. But uh, this person said, thank you so much for the word study, Pastor Sky. I received a ton of grace. And the part where Sunseem asked Jesus if he had forsaken him also hit me deeply. Uh, in the fields, uh, we'll pray deeply and with a fiery heart like Elijah for the current situation, Pravi, and of course myself. Ha ha ha. Keep up the great work. Uh, last but not least, great, uh, really good friend and uh, someone I haven't talked to in a long time is Elder Wayne Pollard. Uh, great comment. Thanks. I-, I just miss him now. Thanks for your efforts using this medium to lead, teach, and update folks. Great to hear your voice. And, uh, you know, Wayne, I, Elder Wayne, I am going to be calling you this week for sure. I'm 100% going to call you this week right? Um, clothing. Uh, so th- that's the comments for uh, comments for today. A lot of great comments. I'm very thankful for all of you guys for your support, your encouragement. Uh, clothing, if you want your clothes and show your pride through what we wear, go ahead and check out the link in the description below for uh, Providence Clothing. Uh, you guys will definitely love these things. A lot of people are buying them right now. And big shout outs, big shout outs on Patreon. Shout outs to Joycelyn from Singapore, Tony, Maria, and Talia in the U.S., Grateful for for, uh, all your support on Patreon, for believing and supporting this channel on Patreon too. And this is a big thing every week, guys. Uh, Like I said, ever since this uh, situation just, you know, went uh, viral, you know, since the beginning of March or the middle of March, um, Patreon, like we, our subscriptions went up all the way to about 196 people supporting. We're down to about 158. And, you know, I understand because a lot of people have decided not to follow Providence anymore or whatever it is. So I understand too more than anything else. Uh, but uh, we're definitely looking for more supporters. So, you know, it's, it's a crowdfunding site. You can support the Morningstar Drive just $3 a month, which is super, super cheap. And at the moment, uh, I hope that uh, if you guys are inspired from the content that we're getting right now, go ahead and click the link in. Oh, I don't think you click it. You have to copy and paste it. Uh, Patreon in the description. You guys can definitely support from there too. All right? Cool. So let's get on to some member music from around the world. Yes. Who are we going to listen to today? Today's feature artist of the day is none other than Rapture Collective MC1 Love Daniel Patterson from Australia with Beautiful Trauma. Can't wait to hear this. Uh, one of his songs that just came out two weeks ago. And then we have AG from Japan with Get Ready. And this is the dubstep version. And we'll finish things off with Renee Lai from Taiwan with Master of My Own. <laughs> Therapy, beautiful trauma, what love, what love. They represent any rap, they say it's conscious. Stuck in the days, blinded by the haze, barely semi conscious. Lacking in clarity, saying nothing but nonsense. Words coming from the darkness, they disturbed by the conscience. My rhyme's so deep that the temper to your subconscious. A last key kid, nobody home on my own. Feeling the wonders on the streets I roam. Sometimes I walk away with nothing to say Even if I explain, you wouldn't understand anyway Times I had nothing left, now will I take it? Will I make a break it, but I never fake it? Real, when I had nothing at all, all I had left was you And you pulled me through, God's watching me, what will I do? I'm gonna ride with you, and when the fakeness shows, you always remain true Fake in action, hundred over hundred fractions God's love, the main attraction, anything else, abstraction Overcoming no matter what comes, get to the other side So let's ride, the word and action coincide I don't joke about suicide, because I live through it No joke, what you laughing about, be spoke 
Lord, that's my confession to get it off my chest session. Life lessons, experience, gain through pain. Weight on my shoulders as heavy as boulders. What do you turn to? Switch, sound disrupt button, disrupting the positive construct. Negative thoughts, lines that I bought, putting up my no sales sign. I see the signs, set a new course, read between the lines, crack the cold morphs, use the force, skywalk on them, skywalk on them. Not all of us came from good homes, some of us were broken and got put the pieces back together, giving hope to endure stormy weather. Gone through a lot of hard times, tears of my parts, feeling up my rhymes. We gotta struggle and strive, survive before we can thrive. It all works out the good in the end. Father, your grace, can you lend me? My heart, can you mend? Scripture, not sweat small stuff, but pay attention to small people. This time here is short, gotta stop playing games. I see time to get by flash frames. Don't wanna live my life on standby. Give me the courage to face my fears. The truth bears all, but to the lies, man falls. The truth bears all, but to the lies, man falls.
个语言能够语言我们遇见，也许是一个画面，我们都走在时间面前，吃着背景一杯，偏见被贴上标签，成为最好的自己，才和最好的你遇见。舍到的时候就要告别。Fall in leaves, fall in love。看着落叶，听着风说，什么颜色都有光泽。想被欺骗、被敷衍、被拿来消遣，冲破世俗的定律，再和朴素的心相连。Every time I ever loved， 生命里小小的、琐的，都伴随着大大挫折。And that was Renee Lai from Taiwan with the song "Master of My Own." Before that, Ag from Japan with "Get Ready," the dubstep version, and of course, feature arts today. That's Raptor Collective's MC One Love, Daniel Patterson from Australia with. Beautiful trauma. All right, so let's get into some news going on around the world. And of course, as brides of this history, and knowing the power of our prayers, that God listens to it, we need to pray. We need to repent for what's going on. So let's figure out what is happening around the world and what happened over the weekend. So let's go to Sudan. As foreign states begin to evacuate as fighting rages on, some foreign nationals have been evacuating from Sudan as the army uses air raids against RSF during battles in Khartoum. Some foreign nationals have begun evacuating from Sudan as the The bloody fighting that has engulfed the vast African nation enters its second week. The bloody onslaught of urban warfare has trapped large numbers in the Sudanese capital Khartoum. The airport has been repeatedly targeted, and many residents have been unable to leave their homes or get out of the city to safer areas. The UN and foreign states have urged rival military leaders to honor declared ceasefires that have mostly been ignored and to open safe passage both for fleeing civilians and for the supply of badly needed aid. And with the airport closed and skies unsafe, thousands of foreigners, including embassy staff, aid workers, and students in Khartoum and elsewhere in Africa's third largest country, have also been unable to get out. The Sudanese army said on Saturday. 
that it would facilitate the evacuation of American, British, Chinese, and French citizens and diplomats from Sudan, while Saudi Arabia and Jordan were already evacuating via Port Sudan on the Red Sea. Uh, by late Saturday afternoon, Saudi Arabia said it had evacuated 157 Saudis and people of other nationalities, broadcasting footage of people on a naval ship. And Kuwait said some of its citizens had arrived in Jeddah. Jordan said it had started evacuating 300 citizens too. So uh, this was in a security alert. The U.S. Embassy in Sudan said it had incomplete information about significant convoys departing Khartoum, traveling towards Port Sudan, and that the situation remained dangerous. So traveling in any convoy is at your own risk. So... The U.S. even right now is focused on evacuating diplomats first. Okay, so this is kind of how bad the situation is in Sudan at the moment. Uh, in second news, we're going to go to Israel as tens of thousands once again rally against judicial reform plan. So plans by Prime Minister Netanyahu's government to weaken the Supreme Court have outraged many in Israeli society. Tens of thousands of protesters have flocked to Tel Aviv and cities across Israel to express their opposition to Prime Minister Netanyahu's far-right government and its divisive plan to overhaul the country's judicial system. Crowds of Israelis held banners with the words, Crime Minister... Uh, overlaid on Netanyahu's face in Tel Aviv on, at Saturday's protests, the latest in a series of weekly actions since the start of the year. Plans by Netanyahu's government to weaken the Supreme Court have outraged Israeli, uh, Israelis who see it as an assault on their country's system of checks and balances and a threat to its very democracy. Protests last month brought Israeli cities to a standstill and threatened to shut down the economy, compelling Netanyahu to delay the judicial reform plan in hopes of finding a compromise. However... Uh, protesters have been undeterred. Crowds of Israelis chanting shame have flooded the streets in the weeks after Netanyahu backed down, demanding that the overhaul be scrapped altogether. So uh, it's a pretty crazy situation there, and it is uh, very dangerous. Because if that happened in the U.S., that would, it, all the power would be at the government, and there would be no checks or balances for the government itself, which we see right now is definitely uh, important. Uh, last but not least, we'll go to South Korea and North Korea. And it's about nuclear weapons and why South Korea wants a nuclear bomb, right? So there is, uh, uh, there is uh, the, uh, the inaugural meeting of the Nuclear Policy Forum, right, has just begun to plot out how South Korea can develop nuclear weapons. So this once fringe idea has exploded into the mainstream over the past months. Even South Korean President Yoon suk yeol raised the possibility during a defense meeting making him the only president to have put this option on the table in recent times. Now, newspaper columns trumpet the idea daily, while a staggering three-quarters of the public support it. South Koreans have grown anxious about their nuclear-armed neighbor to the north, and on Wednesday, Yoon is heading to the White House seeking President Joe Biden's help. South Korea previously flirted with the idea of developing nuclear weapons in the 70s when it ran a secret program, but when the U.S. Uh, US found out, it issued an ultimatum. Seoul could carry on or have the U.S. defend it. With the full force of its existing nuclear arsenal, it picked U.S. support, and to this day, tens of thousands of U.S. troops remain stationed on the Korean Peninsula. And since then, the geopolitical situation has shifted dramatically. North Korea is building ever more sophisticated nuclear weapons that can target cities across the U.S., leaving people to question whether Washington would still come to South Korea's defense. Here is a scenario they chew over. So Kim Jong-un attacks South Korea, forcing the U.S. to intervene. Then threatens to detonate a nuclear bomb over the U.S. mainland unless it withdraws from the water. So what does Washington do? Does it risk having San Francisco reduced to rubble to save Seoul? Probably not. And that's the conclusion those at the secret lunchtime meeting have come to. So it's pretty crazy, guys, that it's come to this point. It's never been done before since the 70s. But the option of making nuclear bombs in South Korea is now... Um, it's supported by 75% of the public, which is huge, right? And that's something we know it's getting really bad over there, right? So let's really pray for that situation there. And that is the top three news around the world. So let's move into some sporting news. And we're going to start off with, um, we're going to start off with uh, the NBA playoffs and another uh, big defeat. Big, big defeat. It is the Miami Heat defeating the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, 121 to 99. And they, the Bucks are still without. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and the series is now Miami leading 2-1. to one. Uh, Philadelphia finishes the series. They defeat Brooklyn 96-88. to uh, They win four. It's a sweep, 4-0. It's done now. Phoenix defeats the Clippers 112-100, to and this is the second straight game that Kawhi Leonard, their best player, has been missing on the Clippers, and now they are losing the series 3-1. to one. Most likely this series is over too. 
And uh, Lakers just crushed the Grizzlies 111 to 101. Uh, that's our first game at home. And uh, big games from uh, Anthony Davis, 31 points, 17 rebounds. And, of course, LeBron James had 25 points, 9 rebounds, and 5 assists. Great great game by everyone all around. Uh, I hope that, um, you know, I, I'm going for the Lakers are now leading the series 2-1. to one. All right? Uh, in soccer, big news, Wrexham, right? Wrexham was owned by two Hollywood stars, one of them which is Canadian, Ryan Reynolds. They score a Hollywood ending with National League title promoting. They're now promoted to this, the this League 2. Right, so Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney watched alongside uh, Paul Rudd as the team won promotion from the National League to the English Football League with a dramatic 3-1 win against Borham Wood on Saturday. Wrexham, bought by Reynolds and McElhaney from a supporter-backed trust in 2021, sealed promotion uh, promotion 15 years to the day since a 2-0, 2-0 defeat at Hereford consigned them to relegation from the EFL. So big congratulations to them. Uh, Man City march on into the FA Cup final and talk of the treble intensifies. Sheffield United matched Pep Guardiola's uh, side for a large part of the first half, but were eventually beaten 3-0. Uh, there was Mario scored a penalty late in the first half and added two more. He had a, he had the, uh, a hat trick. And Arsenal suffer another title blow, right? They 3-3, tr- another 3-3 draw. So uh, now they are five points ahead of Man City, but Man City has two games in hand, which basically means that if they win those two games, they are the league leader. So that's uh, not a good... God, that's not a good thing for Arsenal. Last but not least, we have boxing. Now, this was a huge fight, guys. This was uh, Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about this, but Gervonta Davis wins, scores a seventh round knockout victory over Ryan Garcia thanks to a body shot in their highly anticipated catchweight fight at T Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Right, so big, big. Like Davis was already ahead on all three officials, uh, all all three uh, official scorecards, and Ryan Garcia is now his first loss in this cat, 136 pound catchweight, um, catchweight bout. But yeah, uh, there was a lot of big, big talks about uh, who's gonna win this one. But Gravante Davis, he just, it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. Yeah. So either way, so there it is, guys. Top three news in sports and around the world. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. But you know what that means? It is. The Golden Time. And yes, this is the Golden Time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with a wedding banquet of love, and then one love, and we'll end things off with an oldie but a goodie, my confession to the Lord. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. Now the time's come Time for us all to sing Sing the new songs Everyone come and dance Wave your arms, move your legs now Shake your head all around Move and shake your whole body Let's sing the new songs of this new history Let's go Let's all run All the praise and glory We offer only to heaven Everyone rise, come on Move your body, feel the music Dance as one Just wave both of your hands Shuffle your feet While matching the beat and singing with happiness Ha! Full of joy God and the Spirit watch They can help but laugh Dancing along Dancing with them We are strengthened For us of the new story 
Let's make this wedding banquet For a thousand years as we fulfill God's perfect world of love We'll make it awesome We'll run without regrets As our souls and spirits live as owners Forever up in heaven That great eternal world we're loving God forever, loving the Holy Spirit now and always. We will live with the Lord forever. Jump, 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 jump. Boom, jump, 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 jump. Boom, jump, 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 jump. Jump, 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 jump. Boom, jump, 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 jump. Boom, jump, 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 jump. Ho, 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 ho. Let's make this wedding banquet For a thousand years as we fulfill God's perfect world of love We'll make it awesome We'll run without regrets As our souls and spirits live as owners Forever up in heaven That great eternal world we're loving God forever, loving the Holy Spirit now and always. We will live with the Lord forever. We will live with the Lord forever. We will live with the Lord forever. Jump, 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 jump. Ooh, jump, 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 jump. Lord, and I love this history, using all the strength I have in me, I will give my life to you, I will live only for you.
last met you, my lord. How I made up my mind. How I decided I would learn from you only, focusing on this word alone. I have seen. You really live your life. I have seen for myself. Now I will not be shaken, whatever comes. I have seen you, Lord. So how could I shake? I will serve you, Lord.
And that was My Confession to the Lord. A great song. I think a lot of uh, people have this as one of their favorite songs of all time. Uh, before that, One Love and, of course, A Wedding Banquet of Love. All right. So here we are, guys. Uh, now that our hearts are made ready through that time of praise and worship, let's get into today's uh, Sunday message word study. And what a powerful message. And like I said at the very beginning, uh, these last two weeks' messages, they feel more empowering, right? Rather than the other ones where we're just kind of going through the chaos but it looks like we're kind of, you know, we're, we've kind of grasping the situation now. And now we're able to see, ah, this is what, you know, this is what we need to do right now. And we have that, those two verses and the two titles, Do Not Stumble on Account of Me and the Messiah Jesus was the target of slander regarding the falling and rising of the, uh, of the time period, all right? So uh, great message, great message. And I would have to say it was very convicting and powerful too. So when it came to the opening message uh, before the sermon, we went into the sermon, uh, I really liked uh, the point of if you really, really want to hear the voice of the Lord, if you want to hear Jesus speak to you, you guys got to read the words. Either read the Bible or read the words we're getting every single week. And I think that's one of the things that sometimes we're waiting for is, oh, when are we going to receive the words? And every Sunday we're like, oh, when are we going to receive the words this week? Oh, I can't wait till Sunday when we can just read the words that we've already received uh, on the Sunday and just go through them and just harvest and glean realizations from them like every single day. We are receiving, receiving the original words of the time period, right? And we're not doing it from our own thinking. And we can't think of them from our own thinking either. Like one of the things that something says always is whenever you hear the words, you should never think, oh, that's their message. Oh, that's for them. Whenever you receive the message, it is between you and God. It is God speaking to you. And because it's God speaking to you, what has to happen? You have to believe that these words are for you and only you. The moment we start thinking about other people is the moment we're no longer looking at this as God speaking to us personally, right? And this is why we have to, thinking about my situation, what I'm going through, read the words, listen to the words on Sunday, listen to them again, listen to uh, the, the morning Proverbs, listen to the Wednesday message, right? Read the Bible, read the words we're getting, and definitely the Holy Spirit, Jesus is going to help us to realize, open our eyes, open our uh, hearts to see, ah, this is what he's saying to us right now. And it's going to be for us, it's going to be for all of Providence and for this entire time period too. So uh, I hope that all of us will really be able to take that mentality in as we're receiving the words of God each and every day. Okay, so uh, let's get into the first key message, right? The very, very, uh, well, not the first, the, the first message, no, not the key message. Um, let's get into the first part of the message, right? And basically the first part of the message was uh, going over the scriptures of this week, right? So it was about Matthew chapter 10, uh, basically the instructions that uh, he gave to the disciples as he sent them to preach the gospel. And basically he's telling, he's telling them straight up is, guess what? Satan, right? Satan um, has accused me that I am doing these things in the name of Beelzebub. Like I am the son of Satan, right? And then he said the same thing is, you will be seen in the same way too. And it's kind of very similar to the situation we're in right now is whatever people think of Sunstein, they're going to think of every single person who is in this history in the exact same way, right? They're going to think of the exact, that, that's just the way it is. But the one thing we are certain of is that God will reveal everything that is hidden. Eventually, all of it comes out. When God reveals this, this is when there's a separation of good and evil, Right? And this is when judgment comes. So I really hope that all of us understand this is, you know, what we're doing right now, what the history of God that we're in right now, yeah, there's going to be some things that we're unsure of, like what people talk about this and that, rumors going, we're not sure about it. We're not. And that's why for me, is why would I talk about something I'm not sure about? I'm not, I don't even know if it's true or not. But in the end, everything will be revealed. It'll all come out, right? And what we have to understand is, uh, we have to be those that understand, like, yeah, even though the world is against you, I am with you, God is saying. I am with you. So there's no need to be afraid. Don't be afraid of the evil, right? Don't be af afraid of what they say or what they do against us because eventually everything is revealed in the end. And that, that very powerful 
uh, these, these last verses from 28 to 31 is powerful because he's like, number one is don't be afraid of the people that destroy the body. And that made me think about Sunseem's situation. Like these people are trying to destroy the body. Like Sunseem, they want him dead, right? They want him in there until he dies. But he says, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of the people that could take away the body. And that's almost like, it makes me think more deeply like, man, if Sunseem really believes this because he's in this situation over and over and over again. And yet he's okay. He's okay every time because he's not afraid of the people that are coming attacking him physically. He's afraid of the one that can destroy the body, soul, and spirit. So the real question is even us too when it comes to our faith, who should we really be afraid of? Right? Who should we really be afraid of? God, if God is on our side, and just like, you know, when they talked about the two sparrows are, were sold for like a penny, whatever it is, but he's like, you know, do you know how much more valuable you are than these sparrows? Right? If, if, even if the sparrow cannot fall to the ground without God's permission, what about you? What about you? This is how much God values us, right? And everything is according to the will. Right? So what you have to understand is if we're that valuable, then even if we have permission to drop to the ground just like a sparrow, because we're that valuable, then be, if, it's, if it's the will, then it's something for, it, it's for a huge reason within the will. It's not a small reason. It's for a great reason within the will. And that's why don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The way God sees us is that valuably. So even if we, um, uh, even if the will is for us to go through some type of suffering or pain, there is a will in it. That the most valuable people in God's eyes are going through that pain and suffering means there is something even greater and more powerful that will come from it. So I hope that's something that we keep our, our hearts and our minds thinking of. Now, the first key point, uh, we're talking about, you know, blessed is the one who do, does not fall away in account of me, Right? Blessed is the one that doesn't fall away in economy. And this comes actually, we teach, you know, we teach this verse a lot when it comes to uh, the related missions of Jesus and John the Baptist. And one of the big problems that John the Baptist had was he kept looking at Jesus the human, right? The human aspect of it. Oh, I speak greater than him. I'm better looking than him. I know the Bible better than him. Like there's all these things you look at and you're like, wow, do I, why would I have to follow someone like that? And it's looking at them purely in a physical form, Right. And that's the same thing. We can't do that right now. As John the Baptist, he was in prison and he actually doubted Jesus. Said, "Oh my gosh, are you really the one, or are you uh, are you someone? You know, are we waiting for the real Messiah to come?" Can you imagine how how shocking that was to Jesus? And I want you to think about that in this time period too. The shock, the very person, the number two was John the Baptist right below Jesus. And he didn't even think Jesus was the Messiah anymore. Can you imagine what Jesus was thinking at that time? And think about today too, right? God sent John the Baptist to protect, to prepare, to help Jesus. But he became disheartened and he stumbled, right? Blessed is the one that does not stumble on account of me. And he split from Jesus. And this is something that we have to think about our faith right now. How strong is your faith? What does it mean to stumble? Number one is to be disheartened. Are you disheartened? Are you stumbling right now? Is that the reason why you're, 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 you're going through difficulties? The two definitions we heard from this week's message, right, is disheartened and to fall away. Those are the two things. We can't stumble. We can't be discouraged. Don't fall away, regardless of tribulations and suffering. I mean, think about this. When you think about what causes stumbling, there's only one thing that really causes people to stumble, which is the situation and circumstances happening, right? When you're going through difficulties, when you're going through discouragement, all these things, these are the things that affect your heart, mind, and thoughts and difficulties. How do I know? Because when things are good, no one thinks twice about their faith. When things are good, what do we say? We say, oh, I'll never leave. I'll never, oh, you know, I know this history. This is the history of God. And then all of a sudden, when the difficult time comes, we're like, oh, maybe it's not the history anymore. Where is the problem? The, the problem is not the situation and circumstance. The problem is the heart, mind, thoughts that, are, that, are, that, that change because of the situation, circumstances, the difficulties that are happening. We can't stumble. 
Don't get discouraged. Discourage. Discouragement comes from the heart. Disheartened, right? Disheartened. From start to finish, the Holy Trinity is going to be with you and 100% they'll carry out the will of the entire time period. And this is why we got to make it till the end. We have to make it until the end. Right? We got to make it until the end. And that was like the first, like, that was a powerful first key message, right? It's, it's, like, it's like a common cliche. You'll never know who your true friends are until times are difficult. In the same way, you never know what your faith, what, who has the true faith until the greatest difficulty comes. Think about high school when no one liked you. Who are the ones that stay, that stayed next to you when you're going through a difficult time? Who were they? They were the ones that were true to you. They were the ones. Your other friends that left you, what happened to them? Because of the situation, because of the difficulties and circumstances you were going through, their heart, mind, and thoughts became discouraged. They became disheartened. They stumbled and they can no longer stand next to you. This is why this is such a powerful time. It's a powerful time because this is when we prove our faith. We prove it. How deep are the roots? Because when the wind storms and rains come, it pulls out. If anyone has weak or shallow roots, they pull it all out. How deep are the roots? How deep are the roots? The second key message Right? So, you know, the second key message starts off with like, you know, we know that Jesus is the Messiah, right? Jesus is the Messiah, right? And Jesus is the sign, right? When he comes, it's the sign of repaying individuals and nations according to their deeds. Now, what does that mean? So how can he be a sign to repay everyone? Well, it's all about how do you treat the person that God sends, Right? How do you treat him? That's the, that's the big part. This is why it's a sign. He's going to be one of the most controversial figures that comes out and people are going to be like, oh my gosh, who is this person? And how will, you be tr- how will you be judged? How will you be repaid? According to what you've done. According to how you treat the one that God sends. What do you say about him? What are you thinking about him? You don't know anything that he's done in his life, but are you just going to follow what the media says and believe all these things? We will be repaid according to how we treat them. That's the key. That's how we're paid. You see, Satan's demons, they all said that Jesus, you know, was evil, right? And they did all kinds of evil against Jesus. But remember, what did Jesus represent? Jesus represented absolute truth. And evil pointed at him in saying that he was evil. And they claim that, oh, here's the one violating the law. Remember, when God sent Jesus, he came to give freedom to people. What type of freedom? The New Testament law of children that replaces the Old Testament law. Now, when we say it's replacing the Old Testament law, there's two different types of law. The first law is the law that is true past, present, future, like the Ten Commandments. They are absolute. And then you're going to have laws that pertain only to the Old Testament, like animal sacrifice, right? That's no longer needed today, right? We are now ministers of a new covenant. We receive freedom. We no longer have to do that. And now, instead of receiving uh, forgiveness through sacrificing animal, we get it directly by asking directly to God because we're His children. We have freedom. The sending of the Messiah is the sending of freedom. And yes, the people, the, the, the leaders of, the, of that time period, they're going to say that the New Testament law is wrong and they treat Jesus as a sinner. Why? Because they're ignorant. Jesus changed things from it's no longer about sacrifice, like you know, animal sacrifice, grain sacrifice, you know, wine sacrifice, whatever it was. He said it's about service rather than sacrifice. So then Jesus becomes the last and final sacrifice before God and he sacrifices himself as the final sacrifice, the pure and holy sacrifice. 
And this is why all who believe in Jesus will be saved. Like I like this point when it's talking about Israelites that were enslaved in Egypt, right? And then God sent Moses as the Savior to take them out of this bondage in Egypt. And what happened when they went to the desert of Zin? The moment they crossed the Red Sea, they were no longer in bondage of the servanthood of Egypt. But instead, the Ten Commandments came and now they were in servitude to God instead. They were bonded to God, no longer to Egypt. They're servants of God now. The moment they crossed that Red Sea. And in the same way too, Right? The New Testament came along. God abolishes the Old Testament laws and gave them the law of children. And in this time period, the exact same thing happens. Right, God gave us the law of what? God gave us a law of brides. God gave us a law to fulfill the purpose of creation. And we are receiving and we're learning about the spiritual love, not only for God, the Holy, you know, for all the Holy Trinity, for Jesus, but also for our brothers and sisters. Right now, we receive the laws of this time period so we can interact with the Holy Trinity, with Jesus, with greater freedom. It's greater freedom. We are that much closer. Of course, there's more responsibility, but it's that much closer. Laws change as domain changes. In the same way, laws change between people as relationship changes. Because if I have a friend, a friend is just a friend, and the laws of friendship are much different than the laws of lovers. And the laws of lovers are much different than the laws of a husband and wife. It changes. You can't follow the old times. And you can't be considered righteous because you followed the old laws. It's the new time. That's what we have to understand. Right now is a time where the will, the final will, the final will, the purpose of creation has been fulfilled and we have to maintain it and make it better and better. And we have reached the last prophecy of the entire Bible, which is 2023. We have. That's incredible. We've reached the end. Tell me that's not incredible. That's incredible that we've reached the end. And this is why listening to this week's message is so empowering. It really is. Regardless of tribulations, regardless of persecutions, God and the Holy Spirit, together with Jesus, together with the man of mission, they will always be with us. It doesn't matter what you face. It doesn't matter what you go through. it will always be with us. And that's why we have to have that conviction especially in the most difficult times. Especially. We're receiving the words. You know, Jesus is preaching those words through the man of mission at this time. And we have to be those, you know, that not only just take care of ourselves by listening to the words and putting them to action, but take care of the others too. There's all, everyone belongs to God. God doesn't throw away people. That's why we have to be very careful in what we do. So I really, really hope that we will not lose the faith. But during the most difficult times, we will prove our faith through this time we're in right now. All the, the last, how many years you've been in Providence, whether you've been here for three years, whether you've been here for five, seven, 10, 15 years, your faith is proven by what you do. So let us all be those that take action without falling away from the Holy Trinity, without falling away from Jesus and the man of mission, pray, comfort each other, support each other, and do not stumble, which means do not be disheartened and do not fall away. All right? So there it is, guys. That is uh, the, uh, the word study for the Sunday message. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. I thought it was a powerful message. Very, very, yeah, very empowering. And uh, like I said, the last two weeks, it seems like there's been a change in the direction of the message and it's very, very powerful. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. All right. So there it is, guys. That is uh, today's word study. Hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, have an amazing and awesome time. We're getting to the song of choice, which is a recommendation. Someone has made a recommendation and they want to 
they want to hear the song from Jucinda over there in Vancouver. She wrote this song when she was a newcomer. It's been redone. Uh, great job on this anyways. And uh, this song is called You're My Heaven. It's you I dream of, Lord. I long for your embrace. With love you've led me here, ever thankful for this grace. Let me feel you, Lord, I pray. Fill my heart with your heart. Let my spirit in yours embrace. In the passion of your fire, my bridegroom. Bride of love and joy, oh my love, shape me, perfect me, free me from my sins, let me live with you forevermore in your kingdom. I just want to be your eternal love, your my heaven. I know I've hurt you, Lord, brought you pain beyond compare. I failed in many ways, your heart I rip and tear. But Lord, you've shown me grace in every circumstance. You've forgiven my disgrace. You gave me one last chance To show you that I love you I need you I thank you, my Lord I long to be your hands and feet A bride of love and joy Oh, my love to know you And feel you You're my everything I just want to be Your eternal love You're my heaven My love I want to show you How I love you How I need you My Lord I long to be Your hands and feet A bride of love and joy Oh my Lord, I love you, I miss you, you're my everything, I just want to be your eternal love, you're my heaven, I love you, Lord, forevermore, Holy Son Jesus, my bridegroom. I love you, you're in me, I'm in you, my bridegroom, I love you, you're in me. And that was Jucinda uh, from Vancouver, Canada. Yes, I'll be heading there pretty soon. And uh, that is a song, You're My Heaven. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that song. Great uh, recommendation, all right? So uh, let's get into today's final segment. And of course, every single Monday, we have 2G Talks with Eddie Kwan uh, from San Francisco, but currently in Hawaii. What a nice place to be for six months, right? So today, he's going to be talking about culture and asking everyone what kind of culture Providence needs uh, in order to grow, right? And uh, I, I hope that you guys will enjoy this. You know, I had a great conversation. He was in the man cave uh, section for that time too. So uh, I hope that's something that all of us can really gain a lot from too. Okay, so everyone, please welcome Eddie Kwan from San Francisco, currently in Hawaii with 2G Talks. 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we have a lot of interesting topics to go over, and I'm so excited to talk to everyone once again this week. I really hope that you're having a good, strong start to this week. Uh, and in in line with that, you know, I wanted to go over something that I think it would be helpful for everyone when we're thinking about our next steps forward for Providence. Uh, recently, over the weekend, I got to talk to to Pastor Sky and some of the guys who are around my uh, age range, <laughs> and it was it was a nice kind of difference because I think uh, I haven't really ever run Providence with people who are around the same age as me. Definitely not within the the, the areas that I've been in. And lately, it's that's been starting to change. But, uh, you know, for the, a long time, I can always remember kind of being by myself, uh, you know, in my age range. And so it's actually very memorable for me every time I meet someone who's like the same age as me. Like it, you, a lot of times for those people, it's not as memorable. Maybe, you know, because that's not something that, that they're thinking about. But for me, every time I run into someone who's like my age in Providence, uh, I was always just like so happy to see them and I kind of put a lot of emphasis on it. Uh, so it's very interesting because we're like we're meeting together and we're talking about, you know, some of the things that uh, we think would help grow providence uh, and i think this is an interesting topic for everyone here too uh, because each person's answers might be somewhat different right all of us have had shared experiences of course but our own individual experiences too uh, and i kind of want to see and i kind of wanted to bring the topic to uh every all the listeners here to think about okay what would be conducive to help providence grow and grow most, you know, almost obviously in terms of like growing in terms of lives. Like how can we grow, right? So I think this is a conversation topic that everyone needs to be involved in. Like there's certain things, there's certain decisions that we make and certain small things that not everyone has to be part of. But this kind of topic is something that involves every single person. Uh, and I really believe that to be true because even growing up when I was very young, like as a second generation, like before, like even before my teens, right? Because there's not many people who can say, like they've been around um, from the time that they were like, you know, six, seven years old. Right. But even from that time on, there were things that you noticed. Right. And things that you're like, huh, I feel like this should be different or this should be improved on. Uh, and so I, one of the reasons I bring this up is because um, recently, you know, there's been some things happening with some of the AP members here. Uh, and I saw like pictures from the past, right, from when like they were younger. And it was like really incredible to see because it's like there's, there's so many people and they all look like they're having fun. Um, and one of the things that we discussed together with Pascal and the guys is like it seems to be kind of different, like right now seems to be kind of different. And something that he commented on, and I think maybe many of the listeners might uh, feel as well and so I kind of asked like what what do you think is the difference like what do you think has changed and one thing that we uh, you know talked about is the culture for sure the culture has changed and you know the specific ways the culture has changed you know we won't really delve into but I think that's that's kind of a point that each person at home might agree to not, not necessarily about the culture being different than it was but in order to grow that the culture needs to be like you know in some way like at least in one one way one dimension it has to be different than it was before uh, like for me for for uh, case in point like when I was growing up I think a big thing that I saw was that I really felt like evangelism could go well if the environment is hospitable right and I think this is something that we all know but like one thing growing up was one of the things that bothered me the most is when I, I saw a lot of arguments in the church. And I, I think this is a topic that I, I've expressed multiple times. And I think, you know, now I'm at a point where some of it's understandable, but especially from a, a young child's perspective growing up, it was very difficult to understand. Right? It was like the, the, the level of confrontation, the level of the conflict was was pretty bad. It was like pretty high. It was like. It was like to the degree, like even though we preach about uh, forgiveness and all of these things, and that's like the most crucial thing, uh, it, w it seemed like that was the hardest thing for people to do, especially for the older people. So watching that growing up, that was such a difficult thing. And for me, that's why forgiveness and, and mercy and, and love is something that I emphasize so much uh, now, like even after going, growing up. Uh, and it's something that I try to impress onto the SS and for the people that I live with too. Like, like, and, you know, there's like positives and negatives to that. Like for me, one thing I, I hardly ever do is I almost never, for someone to do anything and yeah like sometimes I, that comes with drawbacks sometimes people ask me huh, how come you don't force you know uh, other people or themselves to do something 
And you know, like I, I have mixed reasons for that. But one of the some of the things that I, I mentioned is is what I just mentioned because I, I saw so much conflict while growing up, and, and I don't think it ever led to anything positive. And it's not just that; that's like one reason. But another thing is, I think to get the best possible result from anyone, uh, you they need to be doing it willingly, right? And and you know, of course, of course, you can maintain a high standard by having everyone kind of hyper focused on what they do and being very managed like very uh, heavily but I believe that to get the best possible result out of someone it has to be done completely willingly right and that's like the whole objective of love and of of, of free will and that's what we teach in predestination and all of that stuff right uh, so so th- that's that uh, but you know I do like going back to the idea of culture one of the things that you know I was reading today, Mm, was talking about how like in order to govern i think this is a very confucian idea and it's a very uh, east asian idea uh, and i know a lot of our listeners are from the the western countries but i think you know implicitly this makes sense too and i think this is kind of like uh something that even in providence that we exemplify a lot is that you know if you govern um to in order to govern like the whole well the parts have to be governed well, right? So in order, like, you know, in, in, in Confucianism is talking about the, the state, right? In order to govern the state, the country or the nation well, then the region has to be managed well. But then in order to manage the, the region well, the family has to be secure and it has to do well. And in order for the family to do well, the, the individual has to be well ordered, right? So it starts all it, it starts from the individual. It starts from the individual and then it leads into the family, the, the, the next subunit into the community and into larger and larger portions. And I really believe that that to be true, right? And so... Uh, it, it once again, like nowadays, one of the reasons why I bring this up, because uh, when everything, I think in 2023 started to uh, come to a head and everything started to come to light, my, my stance on everything, and I mentioned this with the SS with everything, was uh, to kind of like do what something we said in the beginning, where everyone should focus on themselves and develop themselves and, you know, we're mature enough to, to handle things. And it's a point that I emphasized over and over again. But I see now that um, like a lot of the information, which, you know, didn't need to uh, have be like gone into detail by each and every single person has kind of like generally circulated to a great many people, like many more people than when it first started. Uh, And, you know, not everyone might be keen on on all of the details like even for myself i still don't try i don't listen to every single all the details but the general gist of everything that's happening you know uh, i think many people are most people at at least uh for those listening on this channel know of um and so i think you know like i was really thinking to myself that you know maybe the approach has to be different now because everyone knows now like before not everyone knew and it, and, and i felt at the time that it wasn't necessary for each person to really know know the ins and outs um but the reason why i bring all this up going back to that that confusion idea and what something you said in the beginning was yeah, so I, I do think that the approach needs to be somewhat different now, but I still believe that at the core, in order for the whole to do well, the individual needs to do well, right? Because the individual unit makes up the whole, right? And without the individual, there is no whole, right? And so one of the, the things that I, I'm bringing up for this is like in order to make the culture, we each need to think about our place in it and what it is that we want for this providence culture right and each country needs to kind of think about this on their own like it it needs to be kind of different but also of course we have our international uh, community and our international culture but you have to think about your own culture right your personal culture your family level culture and then your church-wide level culture and then your nationwide level culture like in order to make providence at your level what do you think need that needs to be seen in order to to do that well as i really hope that this is something that you guys can think about this week and to have this kind of conversation uh, amongst yourselves like wherever you might be one of the things that we mentioned with pastor sky when meeting with other guys was that a lot of times these are conversation topics that we have with just a few other people with people who are close to uh, with people just within our like uh, our reach that we see regularly but i think this is a conversation topic that needs to be had in in, uh, a large 
platform like one such as the MSC 117.8 like in the comment section below too so that we can gain ideas from each other and glean those things right because each each person has things to share uh, that we don't know in the different parts of the world and so I really can't wait to hear what each person has to say uh, and this is something that I'm really going to be praying for like how can we make the Providence culture where how can we be successful in the way that God would lead us to be successful on the international global providence level but in our own national level in our regional level in a church level in the family level and even on the individual level and that's where it starts right so the the, the entire the large answer will call, come from the small uh, circumstance that we look at individually too so i really hope that this is something that you guys can think about this week uh, and i'm really happy to have had this conversation together with everyone today uh, and i'll catch you guys on another week's episode of 2g talks and thank you so much, Eddie, for another wonderful episode of 2G Talks. And I do think this is something that a lot of us have to think more deeply about. If we want to make this history into something greater, we have to think about what culture are we building in our churches and in this entire history. And it's something that I, I do think, I have been talking about this in the past, what culture are we building? And, um, you know, just like uh, the early Christian church took like, three, four centuries before they can finally build an organized systematic culture and uh, organization that ran where it could be like scalable, right? And in the same way too, we have to think about this for our history also, all right? So there it is, guys. That is the end of today's podcast. Hope you guys had an amazing and awesome time like I did. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive on 17.8. You saw up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone.